All right, today is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Today's a new day, great day, grand day, and your girl's coming back with a cleaning video and some motivational talk, inspirational talk. Hey, hey. Um, welcome, everybody, back to the channel, and welcome, everybody who is new. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sabrina. I'm a mom of four. I do cooking, cleaning, cleaning. Um, vlogs, DIY, all that type of stuff. So if you like that type of content, definitely go ahead and subscribe. I'm basically just a virtual bestie. We laugh, chat. It's really, honestly, it is really fun. So I hope that you um, like the content, okay? But anywho, enough of that plug. Uh, make sure everybody is subscribed, thumbs up, comment, all that good stuff. Because y'all, it really do help the channel out. It really does support when y'all share and comment. It really do. So, and I appreciate appreciate all y'all who do it. Like, even you know, good looking out, y'all. But um, in this video, I'm actually I actually cleaned my and decluttered my kitchen. It was it was a much needed declutter, y'all. Like it happens, okay. So um, I try to do this as often as I can, and um, you know I probably should do it way more than I I do. But <laughs> the point is that it's getting done, okay. Um, but today I'm going to be also talking about toxic traits and toxic traits, not just any toxic traits, the ones that keep you from your dreams, the ones that stop you from receiving the blessings and the goodness that God has for your life, y'all. I all of everything that I mentioned is stuff that I have struggled with, okay? So I'm just want to let you know this is real life raw life. I'm being very transparent about my struggles because not to be a woe is me, but to I know that what I share helps out so many of you and so therefore I'm going be real that's because that's what besties do they be real okay so uh yeah so we're gonna be talking about toxic traits and um i really wanted to talk about um toxic the first toxic trait was horrible self-talk and um aka self-loathing spirit um and if you just to let you guys know i talk i i mention a lot of them as spirits because they are spirits and i'm gonna do a video more detail about how our um our weapons are not by flesh but they are spiritual warfare so a lot of us who are believers i want to let you know it is a you know you know that this is a spiritual warfare so when i say self-loathing spirit i'm meaning self um bad self-talk but um if you don't know what self-loathing is, it means it's basically you have extreme criticism of oneself. You feel um, like you are not enough and you don't deserve anything. You just really are really harsh on yourself and talk really bad. And a lot of times, and I can really go into detail about self-loathing, and I feel like I am going to actually do a video more detail about it. But just for time crunch, um, this this right here is a super struggle because um, it can really take over your life. It can even make you um, act out very foolishly when you are battling with this spirit because you feel so bad about yourself that you will overcompensate in other areas in your life just to... Um, just to try to make yourself feel better and so but it what it is it's just really harsh and bad criticism of yourself and I used to do that I used to always feel that I'm not good enough for anything um, and a lot of it comes from rejection and childhood trauma um, and, and and that side such nature so so I felt rejected I felt like I wasn't good enough on, for years for years and like the Lord would bless me with something and I'm all like I was always afraid it was going to go away this wasn't for me or this is just you know just something was always negative I could never just be satisfied in what um what God was giving me or when people gave me a compliment I couldn't receive it like when people say oh you're beautiful or you're this or you're that and I'm like mm, no that ain't me no that's not right nope 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 and that that's those are lies from the enemy and we have to rebuke that because the thing is that we are created, each and every one of you. I just want to let you, you right there, be like, she ain't talking to me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm, you, you, and you, and you. 
You are created in God's image. He loves you. He adores you. He specially craft you in different areas. You have gifts of that are in his image. Some of you guys are really creative. Some of you guys are really good at talking. Some of you guys don't even know that you have a gift because you guys operated in so well that people are like super just amazed at what you do, but you think it's nothing and you diminish it, but it's not. That is something. That is something. And if you don't know what your gift is, you know, babe, it's okay. But don't downplay yourself, though. Just know that God created you in his image and you are specially designed and that you don't need to be tearing yourself down, especially and if you're not too sure of what your good traits are, what it is. It's okay. Spend that time with God and allow him to reveal himself in your life. Write down some things that you love to do. You know, right? And if it could be small, I like to draw. I like to cook. <clears throat> I like to try new things. And those, let me tell you, that is a special gift, trying new things, because there's a lot of people who be scared to do anything. So I just wanted to say that. So, um, and that right there, I'm telling you, used to be a big downfall. But um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is not making yourself a priority. And I know the Bible says about putting people before you, taking care of others. And yes, 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 yes. And I'm not saying not to do these things. But I also wanted to let you know that God cares about you. You, that individual, you who is in the midst of a struggle and unsure of who you are in Christ and unsure of what to do next and unsure of a lot of things. God cares about you, your mental health. He knows every single hair follicle that's on your head. Hello, he knows and cares about it all to the point that he died upon the cross for you. You right there, your sins and the things that you have done and struggle with. He died for that so therefore he can walk this life out with you. So I'm saying this to say that that you need to take care of you. And I'm not talking about take care of yourself in a... um worldly get your hair done nails done that stuff is good those things i'm not saying that they're bad but i'm talking about take care of yourself by making sure that you practice boundaries making sure that you eat properly making sure that you're praying and in your word daily making sure that you be still in his presence and these are just a few things on how to properly take care of yourself but these are things that we need to be doing on a regular basis because it's impossible for you and it says in your scripture how can you pull a, a, a speck out of somebody's eye when you have a log in yours how can you really be a good asset to the kingdom and really do what God has called you to do when you got a whole junk and bags and stuff that's on you that you need to take care of that you need to make sure is right. You need to heal and forgive and let go and move forward. These are things that you need to make sure that you take care of you, your spiritual self. And so, um, and I can go on and on about self-care and I will, I'll go more into detail, but this is just uh, to make sure that you take care of yourself. The next thing I wanted to talk about is not letting go of bad relationships and not letting go of toxic relationships toxic toxic relationships will distract you and keep you from your blessing sometimes god will stop and delay your blessing on the company you keep oh baby i gotta read this again i gotta read this again sometimes god will stop come on now who who's been there before Stop and delay your blessings. Come on, Jesus. On the company you keep. Watch the company you keep. Watch the company you keep. Watch the company you keep. Beloved. Okay? Get this in your spirit. I know this is for somebody. I know this is. Okay? If God told you to leave them alone. Or don't even go to the relationship. Don't even get into the relationship. Don't even start. Listen, 
And this is not co condemnation at all. This is coming from love. This is a correction of love. So please, if you feel condemned, we bind and rebuke that and cast it down to the pits of hell where it belongs, never to return again. This is nothing but love right here because baby, I've been there. I've been there, okay? But I just want to tell you that if God told you to leave them alone, leave them alone, okay? Leave, let them be. And I know uh, some of us have such good hearts that we just be holding on. I know I can hold, hold up all the hands that we just believe and hope and that God can change it. God can change it. God can change it. But that person has to be willing and wanting and willing and wanting to do the work and receive it. Yeah, they got to receive that. They got to open their hand and take that. If they're not willing to take that and willing to put in the work and do that, then there's nothing that you can do besides be on the sideline and pray because they are going to bring you down. You need to be, be mindful of who you are surrounding yourself with. And there's people that say that you are the company you keep, you are. And I'm not saying... Um, to, to judge people or to condemn that, those who are struggling, this is not that type of conversation. I'm just saying, if that person's sin and what they're doing is causing you to sin and causing you to walk away from God and causing you to have confliction and, and kind of not unsure who, who God is in your life, you need to let that go because that's what scripture says. If, if, uh, if it causes you to sin, if your eye or something like that causes your hand or something causes you to sin, you need to cut it off. You need to cut that off. So, um, but yeah, I got, I'm trying not to look, I'm trying not to get long with this because I could go detail in that, but we're going to, go to <laughs> let me go to the next one. <gasps> oh my gosh, this is good. Okay. Allowing the next thing I want to talk about, allowing people to let you be a dumping ground for their problems Whew, okay let me say that again allowing people to let you be a dumping ground for their problems okay and I will say this I am my sister's keeper but I am not a dumping ground nor am I a therapist better yet I'm not God okay we are not God and I'm not saying that um, it's okay for you to to listen and pray when someone goes through a struggle. I'm not saying, oh, you're going through a struggle. Let me cast you away. No, if they're going through a struggle. Oh, my God, this is going through. Let me pray for you. Um, You know, if they need somebody to cry for, let me cry. Let me, you know, because, you know, I, I may be strong in this area. So, yeah, let me be able to help you through this time. I'm not saying not to help each other. But I'm talking about every time you hear from that person, it's for them to dump all their problems on you and then they're left feeling amazing and you're left feeling heavy. You got to guard your personal space. You have to guard that. And you also got to be spirit led when it comes to receiving people's problems. So if someone's in a struggle, you definitely be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry this is going through. Um, you know, try to help them find resources that can help them, that pro professional that God has given these professionals the grace to handle these type of situations. Lead them to those type of individuals that can help them. Also prayer interceding and be like, God, you know, I'm lifting up my sister. I'm lifting up my brother, da, 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 da. But at the same time, no one to let go, no one to let go and let God. And that's what you, you have to do. Um, the next thing I wanted to uh, share is listening to other people over what God said. Okay, listening to other people over what God has said to you. If God has given you a promise, be careful of who you tell. Who? Who? Let me. Oh, I gotta say it again. If God has given you a promise, be careful of who you tell. Okay, and ask God who you should share it with because there are some people that are in your corner but God has not given them the vision yet 
So you tell them and you know that they're for you, but you tell them so they don't see it. They're like, I don't see that happen. And it tears down what God has said. And they probably purposely did not mean to tear it down. It's just that they didn't see it because God didn't give it for them to see. They gave it for you to see. So we got to be very careful of who we tell these things to. And when they do try to downplay what we, what God has given us is for us to remember what God has said. If you go and apply uh, and you're trying to apply for something and they have told you no, but God has told you that this is going to happen. Do not listen to that. No, don't listen to that. No, continue to believe and have faith. Be like, father, I know you told me. Yes. So where is the yes? Is the yes not yet? Is the yes, I need to go to another place, another situation, another way? Where is the yes yet? Because you said yes and I'm standing firm on what you said and not what man said. Okay? So I just want to get that into some somebody's spirit. Don't give up. If God has promised you something, then it will be so. Period. He spoke light into darkness and it was so. He spoke the the lands and the heavens and the earths and it was so. So he spoke you a promise and it will be so. Receive it, beloved. Hold on to it and do not let it go. Don't let it go. Hold on to that. Um... The next thing I want to say um, is I got two more y'all. I got two more. It's allowing my emotions to dictate my actions. Uh, if, ooh, oh, I got to say that again. Allowing my emotions to dictate my actions. Your emotions will play you out your blessing. I'm going to say that. Okay. Your emotions will play you. They will play you. And you know the sad thing about it? When we get into our emotions, we're getting caught up in our own perspective of what the situation is or what the person said and what they... We're getting caught up in our own perspective. I'm just telling you now, when you get in your feelings and somebody said to somebody, it's because of your perspective of what the person has said and what is being played what is being done is your perspective of it because you either have gone through an experience like this before and somebody played out in that similar similar way or you've seen it happen is your perspective is what you have been surrounded and exposed to that is causing you to make you feel that type of way i'm being i got psychology like <laughs> up in there but no for real though real real like this is some real stuff so When you get caught up with your perspective, you need to remind yourself to lean not on thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct thy path. So I'm not saying you're not right to feel your way a type of way i'm not i'm not saying that hey what you said or say you in a disagreement with somebody you're like you know what it's hurting my that hurt my feelings like that made me mad i'm not saying that you're wrong because of your perspective of that situation yes you have every right to be mad because of that perspective that you have yes but i want to also tell you there's another way that you can handle it by not leaning on your own understanding of it be like okay If you feel this way, be like, okay, God, I'm feeling this type of way. And by my perspective and what I see, I'm ready to go chitty, 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 bang, bang, bang. But you said to lean not on thy own understanding, to lean not on my own perspective and ways and what I'm thinking this should be is to acknowledge you. So God, I'm going to acknowledge you in this, in this place. I'm going to acknowledge you in this situation and I'm going to pray that you will bless it. I'm going to pray that you were blessed, Father. And, and, and watch your life change. Watch your watch the blessings fall because you are no longer leaning on your emotions and your own understanding. You're leaning on what God has said. So, um, to just remind ourselves to not allow our emotions to dictate our actions. 
but to truly trust God that he has our back and if people are if what my perspective if your perspective is right know God has your back though know that that you don't have to act foolishly and this leads me to um my last my last toxic trait is allowing fear to speak louder than what God has said allowing fear to speak louder than what God has said fear is faith backwards and it will cause you to act foolishly but when we operate in faith you may look foolish to others but you will not look foolish to God I'm going to say this again. Fear is faith backwards. Okay. So we, if you don't know what faith is, faith is a substance of things hoped for evidence unseen. So when we're operating in faith, we don't see what's going on. We don't see um, how this is going to plan, but we still walk in it as is so because that is faith. But when we operate in fear, it's backwards to that. Because we believe that this may happen. We would do foolish things because we're scared that this thing is going to happen. Now we're operating in faith, but it's actually fear. And it's going to end up happening the same way. We're going to end up getting what we're afraid of because we're operating out of fear. And it will cause us to act foolishly. We will do foolish things. I, I, hey, I'm telling you everything that I am saying, I have done it all. Okay. And I have been extremely foolish. Extremely. Okay. I'm, I'm the first one to tell you. I've done some, I did some crazy stuff. But anyway, we're not going to talk about the past. But, <laughs> okay. But I'm saying it though. It will cause you to do foolish things. Getting foolish relationships. Be around foolish people. Because we're so afraid. But when we operate in faith, it a lot of people look at us like we're crazy. Hint Noah. But it's not foolish to God. And that's where you want to be. You want to make sure yet you do not look foolish to God. So you can receive the blessings and the promises that God has spoken over your life. So we don't want to operate in fear. So we're going to renounce that spirit of fear, bind and rebuke it, and cast it down to the pits of hell where it belongs. And we also, um, I also want to say fear can keep you stagnant as well. So we just got to be, and it can lead to anxiety, which leads into depression, which leads into a whole bunch of other stuff that we don't need in our life. So be very, very, very cautious of you know of these things all right i have one more trait that i almost forgot that i had to put it in is not having a grateful heart y'all that will stop your blessings right there make sure you keep a grateful heart in all seasons i know some seasons are harder than others but gratitude is one that helps you to know that god is doing something in your life even as i woke up this morning i had a hot meal or i had gas in the car today those are blessings and you want to give god his glory and also it also sets your heart posture up into receiving the blessings because if you are already acknowledging the blessings you have now you will even acknowledge even more the blessings that are yet to come so you always want to make sure that you continuously be grateful to be mindful of the of the whining because that would definitely kill your blessings all right, that is it of the toxic traits that keep you from your blessing, y'all. When I tell you everything in here I experience, um, definitely comment down below if there's any of these that you're struggling with or if you have some extras that you have struggled with that can definitely be a blessing to someone else. Um, also, um, I definitely wanted to leave out with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, gracious God, for this word, God. Thank you for each and every individual that is listening to this podcast, God. I pray that you will bless them, God. I pray that you will be with them. Those who are searching and seeking for you, God, I pray that you will allow yourself to be found, God. Removing all of these evil traits out of our body, we renounce all of these spirits of fear. We renounce the 
the spirit of depression and anxiety and being stagnant god we renounce the spirit of self-loathing and self-destruction god we renounce all of these jealousy and envy spirits and jezebel spirits that are not of you god we renounce them out of our life and our lineage we bind and rebuke them and cast them down to the pits of hell where they belong never to return again god teach us your ways god remove relationships that are not of you god out of our lives and in those who are in the midst of trials continue to strengthen us god with your wisdom god with your mighty hand we bless you oh, oh gracious god we bless you in the mighty name of jesus we do humbly pray amen amen thank you all so much make sure you guys are subscribed make sure you give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share like comment do all that good stuff because it definitely helps out the video and i'll catch you guys in my next video and as always guys god bless Mwah.